This and conference will now be recorded. Before we get started this morning, I uh, just wanted to recognize and thank uh, Eric for his leadership and guidance of the Technical Advisory Committee over this past year, and uh, hope I can uh, fill the big shoes I got left to fill. So thank you very much, Eric, for your assistance there. Uh, item number two, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Stacy uh, for a roll call of determination of a quorum. Sure. From the city of Fredericksburg, Mr. Eric Nelson. Here, um, I mean. Uh, thank you. From Spotsylvania County, Paul Agnello. Uh, present. Rodney White. Present. Wanda Parrish. Leon Hughes. And I do realize we're calling alternates. We're just doing that to help uh, with attendance. Um, for King George County, Nick Miner. Kimberly Wilson. Here. And do I see Mr. Oh, Kimberly Wilson, thank you. Um, Stafford County, Alex Oziak. Here. Brian Council. Here. Jason Towery. Here. From Caroline County, Mike Fincham. Present. Craig Pentington. Here. From PRTC, Charles Steigerwald. From DRPT, Sierra Williams. Todd Horsley. From Fred, Jamie Jackson. Here. Craig Reed. Here. From VRE, Sonali Stoneji. Christina Huffner. Here. From Federal Highway, Ivan Rucker. From GW Ride Connect, Lee Anderson. Here. Kate Gibson. Here. Linda Millsaps. From VDOT, Michelle Shopchar. Here. Stephen Haynes. Here. Jim Ponticello. Dan Grinnell. And that concludes member roll call um, real quick, just for um, attendance purposes. If you have joined just by phone, whether you're a member of the public um, or staff, can you please uh, state your name real quick for us so that we can make sure that we have correct attendance? Hi, hi Stacy, this is Nick Miner. I'm, I apologize, my, my mic was on mute when you called my name. Okay, thank you. Do we have anyone else just by uh, phone? But, um, I mean. Thank you. Hi, it's Susan Gardner. Okay. Hi, this is Linda Lassute from VDOT. Okay. Thank Hi, you. Hi, I'm in Radio Fredericksburg. Oh, thank you. This and we do York. have. Oh, this is Neil from King George County. Thank you. And we do have a quorum. So it's back to you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Stacy. All right. Next on the agenda is item number three, which is the approval of the July 6th uh, TAC agenda. Uh, before we move forward with that. I do have one item I'd like to add, probably under item 8A, this would be number three. Uh, I'd like to add a, uh, a call for CMAC projects as part of the discussion under 8A uh, about the 5307 funding. We might be able to free up some additional CMAC funding, replace that with CMAC. So as part of that, I'd like to go ahead and place a call for CMAC projects so we could uh, allocate that funding. So uh, good morning, uh, Alex. This is uh, Paul from Spotsylvania. I, I just wanted to add on to that, uh, that we'd also like to have that discussion under basically 8D as well. And basically, if there's any available STPG, RSTP funding to also talk about potentially allocating that. Okay.
Are there any other uh, additions to the uh, agenda? All right, hearing none, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda, Eric. Second from Paul. All right, any further discussion? All right, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, call a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, there any opposed, please say no. All right, uh, hearing none, we'll consider the agenda approved as amended. All right, next item number four is the approval of the June 1st TAC meeting minutes. Uh, does anyone have any corrections or comments to the June 1st meeting minutes? All right, hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and consider those approved unless I hear any objections. Are there any objections to approving the June 1st minutes? No objections. All right, we'll consider the June 1st meeting minutes approved then. Uh, moving on to number five is the approval of the June 8th TAC meeting minutes. Any uh, corrections or comments on those meeting minutes? All right, again, hearing no, we'll kind of consider that approved unless there's any objections out there. No objections. All right, we'll consider the June 8th meeting minutes approved. Uh, moving on, number six is the review of the June 15th and June 22nd policy committee meetings. Uh, Adam, are you going to be taking that one up? I will take that one. Yes, thanks, Alex. So just a couple quick highlights from the June 15th and June 22nd policy committee meetings. Uh, we did hold a virtual public hearing for the four documents that we had in a public comment period that ran until June 19th. Um, we did pass resolution uh, number 2040 at the June 15th meeting, which allocated CMAC funding and also had a balance transfer to move some funding to some new projects. Um, looking further to the June 22nd meeting, uh, we did get the FY21 UPWP approved as well as the FY20 UPWP amendment. Um, we did not have a quorum for the latter part of the June 22nd meeting. Um, as there were no representatives from the city uh, at the time. So not all of the resolutions that were put forward um, were voted on, but we did have the time sensitive resolutions uh, approved in time for the uh, start of the new fiscal year. So those are just a couple quick highlights for those who were not in attendance at the policy committee meetings in June. All right, uh, thank you, Adam. Uh, I guess next is item number seven, uh, public comment. Are there any members of the public online who'd like to speak or make any comments? All right, uh, hearing none, we'll move on to the next item, number 8A. Uh, this is regarding 5307 funding opportunities for both new and existing transportation projects. Uh, Jason, are you online to head this one off? Yeah, hey Alex, I'm here. Okay. Um, so just at a high level, um, there's been um, a number of discussions over the past month about um, transferring some, or allocating, I should say, um, FY21 and 22, um, 5307 funding. Um, uh, this is a GWRC policy committee decision ultimately um, but um, FAMPO is involved because the concept that we've been considering is essentially swapping uh, some of the previously allocated FY21, 22, and 23 CMAC funds um, that were, in this case, um, allocated to um, some VRE projects. Um, the first VRE project is the biggest one. There's about $2.8 million dollars. Um, that was allocated between FY21, 22, and 23 CMAC funds um, towards um, platform improvements at the Brook and Leland stations. Um, we had a discussion with the RPT 
and VRE and, and other a handful of other members from GWRC and um, of course uh, some of the TAC leads uh, about a week ago um, to discuss what that would look like, the potential for swapping out those funds, essentially um, working with GWRC um, to allocate uh, 5307 funds so that the CMAC funds could then be returned to um, the FAMPO for consideration um, and uh, a potential call for projects on those. Um, so that was the, the biggest one. Then there's about, um, going from memory here, I think a little over 300,000 or give, give or take in a VRE um, study that was um, allocated in, uh, again, the same year as FY21-22. Um, I believe it was STP funding, um, um, Adam, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was STP funding um, that was allocated on that project, and that was for um, multimodal study improvements um, at the Brook, Leland, and Spotsylvania VRE stations. So, again, the concept being to work with GWRC and VRE and others to um, replace those funds with 5307 funds and work to um, free up those CMAC funds to be brought back to FAMPO for decisions. Um, so just that's at a high level, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, or I guess Paul, you may, and Kate, uh, obviously I know you guys have some discussion points on us as well. Good morning. Uh, this is Paul. I just uh, want to uh, add a couple points to what uh, uh, Jason has uh, said. So uh, I, I completely agree with his remarks. And uh, I'll just add that basically we, we've been working cooperatively with the other FAMPO localities to uh, uh, try to develop solutions to more efficiently use uh, scarce transition resources. And basically with 5307, it seems like there's an opportunity to basically use some of that for GWC staff expenses, uh, which could free up some CMAC and RSTP in the long run. And I'll say that the 5307 is a reoccurring funding source now, kind of starting basically back in FY20 at about kind of 1.3 or a little bit uh, over that uh, 1.3 to 1.35 million per year uh, going forward. I'll say that we're, we're still basically working kind of with GWC and PRTC on basically eligible projects, but I'll say at a high level, uh, it seems that uh, multimodal planning efforts could be eligible. Uh, examples of this could be the FAMPO LRTP, if there's a transit study, maybe a TDM plan, that uh, those projects could be eligible. With transit, we know that capital is eligible and then preventative maintenance. Uh, and then for bike ped, this is something we uh, learned recently that a uh, bike pet project could be eligible for capital if it's within a three miles of a rail station or within a half mile of a bus stop. Uh, so, so that was kind of a new thing we learned. But I'd say we're, we're continuing to kind of dig into the regulations and work with our partners and try to basically uh, figure out how to best uh, kind of I'll allocate the funding, and I think in the coming months we'll continue to find out more information and be able to uh, present better information to the FAMPO committees. Uh, that the, the, uh, that concludes my remarks. I'll turn it over to Kate. Thanks. I'm going to turn my camera on here. Um, so thanks, Paul and Jason, for kind of teeing that up. Um, just to give people a little bit of background on the 5307 funding, this is funding that is generated through the Vanpool Alliance. So that's a partnership between GWRC, PRTC, NVTC, and DRPT. <laughs> um, a lot of acronyms there. But basically, um, Vanpools join the Vanpool Alliance and submit their data on their ridership and the miles traveled to the National Transit Database, and then that generates 5307 funding that flows back to those partner agencies, um, not DRPT, but the other three, GWRC, PRTC, and NVTC. Um, so 
you know, just to be really clear, that's money that's being generated by our van pools, which are supported through the GWRI Connect program. And that money comes back to GWRC, and as Jason mentioned, it's up to the GWRC board how they want to allocate those funds. So FY20 was the first year that we actually had funding available to allocate. We allocated all but $100,000 to FRED. Um, so now we're looking at how do we allocate FY21 money and even kind of on a longer term basis, how do we make decisions about how this money is allocated? Um, so one of the things that we've been talking about in the short term is doing this 5307 CMAX swap, which would allow GWRC board to allocate 5307 project, uh, funding to a project in the region and then that would free up CMAC money that could be used on other things. Um, so the project that we identified is the VRE platform improvement project. Part of why that would be um, a really great use of the 5307 funds is that PRTC is the recipient of 5307 funds and so they would as VRE's fiscal agent be able to use that money for VRE without having to go through the lengthy process of creating a sub-recipient agreement. Um, so that's the project that we're looking at in the short term and we've been brainstorming with the locality staff about the best way to, to go about that process. Um, so I, I can talk a little bit about that too. But just so that you all are thinking through kind of the longer term, um, we'd like, GWRC staff would like to put kind of a more objective process into place. Um, and we don't know exactly what that looks like, but maybe it could include, you know, calling for projects on a regular basis so that people could apply for 5307 funding. Um, and then that funding is distributed based on some sort of objective criteria. Um, and, and then again, ultimately up to a vote of the GWRC board. So just really quickly on the VRE, um, CMAC swap idea. So we've been talking to locality staff about doing the CMAC 5307 swap on the VRE project and doing it in the short term um, to try to leverage some additional CMAC funding for smart scale projects. So my understanding is if we were to do that, the deadline um, to submit leverage funding for smart scale is the end of October. So what we are kind of talking through and what I think we want tax feedback on today um, basically would be to talk about this at the FAMPO meeting this month. The GWRC board does not meet in July. And then talk about it at the GWRC board meeting in August, FAMPO, meeting, FAMPO does not meet in, July, in August, sorry, um, and then have a joint meeting in September. Um, so ultimately what this would look like is the GWRC would vote to allocate 5307 to this particular VRE project, and then the FAMPO policy committee would vote on how to reallocate the CMAC. Um, so there's kind of a couple moving pieces in there, and I think there would need to be some agreements and MOUs in place. I think the question that we have for VDOT um, for today's call or in the future is if we could do a call for projects ahead of the 5307 money being allocated so that we would have some sort of idea of where the CMAC money would be reallocated to as a part of the swap. Um, so I think that's kind of where we are at. And I know we had talked about adding the idea of doing a call for projects to the agenda today. I don't know if that's specifically for this or something else, but um, I think that that's kind of where we are with it. So this is Paul. I, I just wanted to add on to that, that there are other funds that could potentially be allocated besides the, uh, the 2.8 million in CMAC. There, there is, potentially a little bit of CMAC funding from a Quantico bus project. There's also the potential of the FY27 CMAC or the FY27 STBG RSTP funding. I'll say that the FY27 would be for smart scale. Mr. Chair, this is Jamie from FRED. Um, yes, we'd already talked to Stafford about that, uh, those funds becoming available for the Stafford Quantico um, route. However, I do want to make one point um, clear from Fred's perspective. 
One, um, I probably wouldn't use the term swap for CMAC in um, CMAC and 5307 funds because it could leave the impression that you're circumventing the process of your scoring and ranking criteria for CMAC funds. And also, I would also note that something we had raised to on the previous chair is that at this time, since Fred is a department of the city, that we don't have direct access to CMAC funds, um, but I know that's a process we're going to revisit in the future. Um, and since uh, some of this conversation is about transferring funds, you know, directly to VRE and making funds available through CMAC, um, I would just request that the committee consider Fred being able to be in the same process since we are, even though we're a department, we're still uh, basically an in, the only entity operating transit service that we are able to be scored and ranked against other projects. If not, we won't be eligible for basically either uh, area of, of funds. And why this is important is that CMAC funds allow us to do things that our 5307 funds, our CARES Act funding, um, and any other grants that we're eligible for does not do. So in this process, as we move forward, um, I, I would just ask that the entire committee consider that as um, something that needs to be evaluated once we get through that process of reevaluating projects. Even if we're talking about reevaluating projects now, um, Fred put in four or five projects for consideration and none could be considered. So just want to make sure that um, if we're going to open up the process that Fred be considered in that as well. Okay, certainly, Jamie, thank you for your comments there. All right, um, I guess, did we want to hear anything from VDOT if there is any issue about making the call for um, CMAC projects for this possible 5307 slash CMAC swap before those funds are actually in place? I guess some of those projects are um, smart scale, correct? You're talking about the current smart scale projects that you want to put this money on? Uh, some would be current smart scale, yeah, I think some would be future as well. Hey, this is Jason <clears throat> um, and Kate, um, Paul, feel free to chime in. I, I think so the discussion we kind of had the other day was um, I think smart scale um, has to be, you have to have your final um, funding um, decisions made by October, if I'm correct. And so when we kind of backed out of that, um, we thought that um, if the policy committee needed to make any CMAC allocations that would have to happen by their October meeting at the latest. Um, and so kind of working through that, um, we felt that it was important for the TAC to at least um, start considering projects now in light of the, the likely um, CMAC funds that, that should be available here in the near future. Um, and yeah, Jamie, to your point with the, um, the, uh, you know, verbiage of using a swap, um, I think, so we've talked about it as kind of a swap, but, um, just to be really clear, the idea here for everybody is to, um, free up these CMAC funds and replace them with 530s by replacing them with 5307, right? So the process that we would have to follow um, to allocate those funds. If we could start that, I think we kind of determined in the very latest um, to have the project scored in, I believe we were talking about August, um, to have them scored, I'm sorry, maybe, I'm sorry, September to have them scored and in front of the uh, policy committee uh, for consideration there, hopefully with a, an eventual vote um, by, at the latest, again, the October meeting. I agree with your language. Sorry, Mr. Chair. This is Jamie. Jason, I, I do agree with your language about freeing up the funds. I just want to make sure that um, everybody is on the same page with that, because when you're talking about the swap, that can cause some problems for you later on. 
Yeah, and um, also the Quantico bus route, um, Jamie, that you and I have been emailing back and forth about. Um, just just to be clear, before those funds are allocated or um, considered, again, the same thing needs to happen. The policy committee or something similar would have to happen. The policy committee would actually have to uh, vote probably in at either the July or August meeting to officially remove that project from the CMAC list, and then those funds would become available. And I think there's about 200,000 there, give or take, in CMAC funds. Correct. I guess my question was, are you are you thinking about moving, Ms. Michelle, I guess are you thinking about doing some fund swap with the existing smart scale projects that are managed by VRE and DRPT, the, um, the Brook, Leland platform extensions, the um, those that have been previously funded, two of which have CMAC funds on, two of which do not. Is that my understanding or are you just looking for future smart scale projects? That is correct. Okay. And you're opening up a call for projects. When is your, your anticipated deadline for this call for projects? Um, well, it would have to be in time to get it on the September policy committee meeting um, for final recommendation. So I would I would assume we'd want to get these in front of the TAC um, by early September. So we would have to have those probably by the end of August. I'm just throwing dates out here. Adam, help me out. I, I yeah, we, so the TAC, sorry, right. Alex, if I could just real quick. the. Uh, September TAC meeting, due to some timing issues around Labor Day, we're, we're proposing that that's going to be August 31st. So with that in mind, um, the latest we would want to have that complete so that we could get that packet together would be maybe August 21st, give or take. And this is Kate. Would that include having the scoring complete or just having the projects submitted by the 21st? having this scoring complete so thank you kate so for the deadline for giving us some time to score those projects um i would suggest perhaps by august 7th that would give us two weeks to score the projects hi everybody this is okay. uh, kate Young. Hi, everybody. This is Kate Youngblue from DRPT, um, new to the group, uh, but happy to be on the call. Um, I have to jump off to join another call, but I did want to um, express some interest in um, DRPT participating in this uh, call for projects for a, another important uh, rail project that's going on at the, the Brook Leland area. Um, and it was something that we spoke about. I, I didn't know when to jump in on this, but since I have to jump off, um, I wanted to jump in right now. Um, we were on the, the Van Pool discussion about the 5307 project, and we have a very large project called Siding A. It's this, essentially a third track between uh, Dahlgren interlocking near Fredericksburg and uh, the Potomac Creek um, area. Uh, near the Brook Station, so essentially between Leland and, and Brook, uh, in which we need to deliver that project by 2025 uh, with construction completion. So we are seeking CMAC funding, um, federal, <coughs> other federal funding to complete that project, uh, the amount, of, the project budget of which is $108 million. Um, so we would be uh, trying to participate in that call for projects um, as well um, to get that project eligible. Um, there's been some some other conversations with folks from VITA and internally uh, and with you all uh, about the, that project specifically, but it really would benefit the station improvements that had been planned there and are, and are continuing to move forward through VRE and the rail generally um, in the FAMPO region. Um, but I did want to jump in real quick to, to to discuss that project briefly. And I apologize, but I do have to join another call right now. Um, so uh, I'll try to jump back on after the call is over if you guys are still on. Um, but I did want to mention that before I got was a, had to leave. So thanks so much. 
Oh, and Sierra Williams is on the call too, and she has uh, other talking points if you guys have questions. Um, we've discussed, so she's she's happy to to take those those questions you may have. Okay. All right, then. Well, I guess circling back then on our call for CMAC uh, project applications. Uh, last time we made the call, we kind of limited it to one application uh, per locality. Uh, seeing the interest expressed by Fred and DRPT to also participate, um, do we want to perhaps expand that number of project applications to uh, to two per locality and maybe include uh, PRTC in that as well? So this is uh, Paul from Spotsylvania. I, I think that that's a good idea to have kind of two per FAMPO locality and then basically one for uh, transit under PRTC. I'll say that... Uh, <clears throat> We also would like a consideration for GW Ride Connect for FY22 CMAC funding. We also want the, the call for projects to not just be uh, specific only to CMAC, if there's STBG RCP funding, to also potentially include that. And for the, the FAMPO locality uh, projects, basically for kind of smart scale projects to be kind of the universe of projects uh, that could potentially be submitted. So this is Kate. I think you said this, Paul, but the call for projects would encompass potential freed up CMAC um, from a 5307 allocation, freed up funding from removing the Quantico bus project, and then also allocating FY27 funding. Is that right? Yes. And I'll say if, if there is any other additional funding available, say today we don't know exactly how much funding we have. And I'll say I don't want to kind of so narrowly define the call for projects that we exclude potential funding that could be made available for projects. Sure. It just, it sounds like it's a lot of different sources of funding. So to your point, kind of keep it open. Um, yes. I'm just trying to think through what the magic number is, two per locality, one per transit organization. Do you think that that would get you the right amount of requests? Yeah, so, so basically what um, I, I I just said to kind of add on to what Alex said was kind of seven total applications, two per FAMPO locality, and then one basically for transit under PRTC. PRTC is the, the voting member basically for transit on FAMPO. I said that PRTC, though, is representing all the, the uh, transit kind of organizations in the FAMPO process. So this includes FRED, includes DRPT, VRE, uh, GW Ride Connect, anyone that's doing kind of transit related activities is represented by PRTC. Hi, this is Christine with VRE. Um, again, given what Paul just said as far as PRTC representing multiple transit agencies, I'd like to suggest that they also have two, at least two <laughs> applications. Um, I think having limiting them to one is potentially limiting. Um, given the need for and the diversity of the transit that they represent um so i'll and then i also had a question um as to whether for a project like the vre the the multimodal um study that had cmac allocated to it that was then uh, transfer to another project, would that need to be a new application to be considered for, for funding and any available funding that's now being allocated? So, so Christine, this is Paul. My, my thought on that is basically that would be kind of a new application for 53 or 7 funding. Uh, we're, we're supportive of basically uh, kind of that study being funded with 53 or 7, but the 53 or 7 is not something that's under the uh, purview of FAMPO. Okay. This is Jason. Um, and Paul, I saw you had sent an email. And I'm sorry, I'm just getting back into the saddle after a few days off here. Um, about the FY27, are we talking about allocating CMAC in FY27? Or are you talking about STP funding as well? So, so my thought is definitely the CMAC. I'll say the STBG, RSTP kind of were flexible on, but uh, uh, basically at this point didn't want to kind of close the door 
Uh, I mean, if Stafford is supportive of allocating some or all of that, uh, it would be good to kind of include that in the potential funding to be allocated today. I'll say there's also the, the potential basically with, you know, the FY27 funding and there's uh, basically I'll say the, the funding potentially to come off of the Beery station projects in Stafford is more near term funding. There could be some swaps within just the, the different years funding for CMAC or STBG or STP where basically for the eligible projects, let's say they might actually receive funding in FY25 because of the way that the swaps occur. Since I said that a lot of the uh, the VRE station uh, basically project funding, I believe, is previous through FY maybe 22, um, may, maybe 23, I forget the exact kind of final year, but uh, that's more near term. And if we're putting some of this funding basically on kind of smart scale or some of these other projects, uh, they might not be ready to use this kind of previous or older funding right away. Uh, so basically, there, there there could be some swaps with the CMAC and RSTP funding, just basically to make sure that the right projects have the funding for the right years. Okay. So I guess this might be a question for VDOT, but. I mean, is it typical to limit the number of applications that you are accepting from each, or does it need to be an open call for project? To my knowledge, there's never been any uh, limit. So, so this is Paul. I, I, I just want to make the point that basically there's not uh, – you know, let's say fifty million dollars in funding to allocate. We're talking that there's probably like something like three to seven million available, depending on basically how much of the FY twenty seven is allocated and how much the other funding is available. So um the the concern I would have is if there are no limits, that basically the FAMPO staff would have let's say thirty applications that they have to score in a very short period of time for, for a very small amount of money. I totally get that from a practical perspective. I'm just wondering, run, wondering from a process perspective, because this came up recently too, about following the process and having an open call for projects. Um, I mean, I'm wondering if it might make sense to say two per locality, one per other entity. I think that you know Fred should be able to submit a project, DRPT should be able to submit a project, I don't know that there should be a limit on just one for transit in general, but um, and we can use that as a guideline, but technically it's an open call if people have other projects. Yeah, I will say there is nothing in our bylaw laws that uh, limit the amount of projects that can be apply for CMAC funding. And I think that's been part of our issue in the past is we've been funded a, a mile wide and an inch deep across projects and nothing can ever get done because it, everything gets so little bit of funding. So I think really trying to limit the projects so we can concentrate that funding on a few projects and get them done is kind of the, the thought behind all this here. Uh, this is this is Eric. Just a quick thought. I mean, uh, limiting projects is not unusual. Uh, as an example, Smart Scale, we're limited to uh, you know four submittals. Uh, but I think the issue is really uh, fairness for the transit agency. So I think if we can figure that out, we we should be fine. Yeah, this, um, this is Christine. Would... Oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say I would look to what have been your past practices. As far as your calls for applications, I, I don't believe it's written in your your written down process of what you've done. Um, but sometimes, if you don't have your written process, then your past practices demonstrate what your protocols have been in the past, and that is, in fact, then your protocol that you would follow, or that's what we would look for you to follow. Um, I know in the past, sometimes you've limited numbers, sometimes you haven't. Some years looking back through your meeting minutes. So that's one avenue you, you could take if you so choose. Hey everybody, this is Jason. Um, 
So I, I would just say, keep in mind that part of the reason that we're even looking at um, having these CMAC funds available is because of the um, availability of 5307 funding coming to the region, um, which is much more exclusively focused on transit capital. Um, so, you know, the 5307 funding that um, GWRC is going to be working with um, is really going to be better suited towards transit um, uh, projects and applications. Um, so I, I would have some concern. Um, while I certainly, you know, think that there's um, definitely some room to have the transit agencies in here um, submitting on this funding as well, I would just re remind everybody that the, a lot of the localities, we're not going to have the ability to use that 5307 funding to the same extent that the transit agencies will. So um, I just throw that out as a, as a caution um, because you know, some of the, some of the transit um, projects can get, especially on the rail, and I'm, I'm not trying to pick on you, Christine or VRE or anybody, but I think some of those can get pretty expensive um, and they have the potential to absorb most, if not all, of the CMAC funding on one or two projects. Um, and so I, I think I would just throw that out as a word of caution. Certainly, you know, everybody here wants to be fair and, um, you know, have a process to go through. But um, that that's my two cents. Hey, um, this is Chris. This is Christine. I, I I just wanted to maybe reassure you. I think that was Jason. I mean, I'm I'm not sure VRE has anything, any major project in mind it, that we would submit for this call for projects. Um, but I, I think we would we would take the opportunity to look at and ensure that we don't have any projects that may re, in the Pampo area, based on their current status, may require any kind of funding, and I don't think there are, but I'm just saying that, but also to the point that others have made of, you know, the policy and, and if there is, you know, lacking a, a, a formal policy on limiting the number of applications, um, I think, you know, establishing something now and then going forward if the potential for that to become the, 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 the process or the, the standard, I, I would hate to see you know the the transit some be somewhat limited going forward, and I, I like I think it was Eric's suggestion of or whoever it was you know one application per other organization to to give at every transit organization an opportunity to be able to forward projects for consideration. All right, well, I think oh, go ahead. This is Jamie Jackson. Just one uh, quick last comment. I, I agree what was uh, just said as well. Um, Fred would utilize that available funding um, uh, that comes through VRE for the van pool money for probably present items for um, certain projects. But in the future, that is kind of more where my concern is. Um, as I mentioned before, I would like to you know, be actively involved in the process on how we uh, rank and score projects in the future. So I do not really want to take away from anything that's pressing right now. I uh, just want to make sure that Fred is in the process. So seeing how our projects would score and rank is really important to us as an agency. I would also consider just for the future, again, maybe not for this call for projects, um, is that we look at scoring. I know when I looked at project scoring for previous uh, rounds um, in this particular MPO, some projects were very scored very low. And I think at some point the uh, body needs to consider a threshold where certain projects just aren't eligible for, for funding because their score does not meet a certain threshold, which would make them a successful project or not so much a successful project, but it, it's not ranked in a way that um, matches the requirements of uh, the MPO where that project literally would just fall off just because it didn't meet the scoring criteria, regardless if it were um, a in that number of two projects um, for a jurisdiction or one project for an entity. So that's my only comment. Uh, I'm done. Thank you so much. All right. I think we've had uh, some good discussion uh, regarding the call for projects. 
Um, do I have a motion uh, in regards to the call for projects and how many allocations uh, as far as project applications per localities and transit agencies? Alex, this is Eric. I'll take a shot at it. Um, I would uh, make a motion that we uh, open a call for projects to include, uh, to be limited to uh, two projects per locality uh, and two projects uh, for PRTC. Um, part of that is my understanding is that uh, Fred <coughs> may well uh, ha have a project that would be submitted through one of the localities, but I think I think two projects per uh, as a level of fairness that, uh, that we're looking for. And uh, Erica, this is Paul. I, I had kind of just uh, in addition to that, basically for the locality projects and for one of the PRTC projects, they limit it to basically smart scale round four candidate projects. The second. PRTC project could be any transit project under PRTC or, or a different transit agency. And I'll say basically with GW Ride Connect, we want consideration of the 125 and CMAC for FY22. Right. My understanding is the, the Ride Connect would come off the top. Yeah. This is Jason. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I guess I should wait to see if there's a second first. Well, yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll go second. ahead and second uh, Paul's motion there to where we would have two applications per locality. Those two applications would be limited to uh, smart scale projects. Two applications from the PRTC, one of which would be limited to uh, a smart scale project. And then this would also include uh, an allocation of uh, FY22 CMAC funding for GW Ride Connect. Uh, Mr. Chair, is there a discussion? Um, <clears throat> uh, Paul, can you just explain again? I, I was confused what you were saying about the smart scale and round form, what you were, how you were explaining that, because there's there's kind of two different areas that we're looking at right now. There's the near-term <coughs> funds that would become available in CMAC because of the um, potential 5307 use on those VRE projects. Um, then there's in a separate matter, and, and that needs to happen in conjunction with GWRC. And then in a separate matter, you're discussing uh, FY27 um, funds to also be considered, but only for smart scale applications. Um, could you just give me a little clarity? Sure, sure. That's a great question. So basically, with the the near term funds, most of those basically would be uh, uh, the potential 2.8 million in CMAC that's on the VRE station projects in Stafford. Uh, th there's a little bit of funding on the Quantico bus. So basically, if you total all that together. It's around $3 million. Um, with, with FY27, there's potentially the CMAC or the uh, uh, the, the STBG uh, RSTP funding, which could be allocated uh, for smart scale projects. Uh, I'll say basically, um, uh, we think there would be value in making at least CMAC funding available for smart scale candidate projects. Uh, just to increase the amount of leverage funding available to assist uh, localities and basically transit agencies with smart scale projects, uh, basically in round four, since leverage funding is uh, such a critical uh, piece of just the smart scale process. I'll say with the STBG RSTP funding, I know there are some specific issues with um, that funding being being used for the benefit of North Stafford, and the MOU is not pass for that yet. So basically, uh, with, with that, I was just kind of throwing that out as maybe something for consideration. But if Stafford is not comfortable with that, I, I think that should be taken off the table. Uh, so, so so those are my thoughts. So um, just to make sure I'm understanding, though, on the 
the applications that we're talking about, Eric, you had suggested two per locality, two for PRTC um, to submit on behalf of transit related uh, ones. And of course, I guess Fredericksburg City could also submit at least for Fred um, an application if you'd like. I'm, I'm thinking that's what you were getting at there. But those, so we're looking at um, eight potential applications one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, eight potential applications. And our, but this is, those applications would be for any of these funds available FY prior through FY27 CMAC. So, so, so Jason, this is Paul, yes. Uh, I, I would say that basically it would be any available CMAC funds. I say if we want to exclude the STBG or STP funds, we should kind of probably clarify that. Uh, I'll say basically with the universe of projects that could be submitted for the localities, there would be smart scale round four candidate projects uh, that are either kind of local projects or they're on some kind of regional project list for FAMPO or GWRC. And then for the transit projects under PRTC, one would have to be a existing, basically a candidate smart scale project on somebody's list. The, the other could be open. Okay, I understand. So the PRTC applications, you're saying one would be geared towards smart scale, the other one would be open? Yes. And I'll say kind of with uh, some of the, the projects, it may be a case where uh, part of the project is, let's say, eligible for CMAC funding, but uh, I mean, not all of the project is eligible for CMAC funding. Um, so in terms of Stafford's, you know, um, support of the STP, um, you know, I, I think at least as far as the TAC is concerned today, um, because what we're really doing is um, recommending and just maybe somebody correct me here if I'm wrong on the process. Today what the TAC is doing is recommending um, a call for projects to the policy committee. The policy committee is going to consider that at their July meeting. Um, assuming that happens or are we going ahead and trying to do that call for projects now? So, so my, my thought is we need to wait until the policy committee basically gives authorization for this. So, so I don't think we should do anything before the uh, the July 20th uh, FAMPA meeting. Okay. I'm just thinking in terms of timeline. Our timeline is getting shorter here now. We're trying to get these over to the FAMPO team by early August. Um, I think when we were initially talking about this last week in terms of the near-term funding, we weren't looking at FY27. That's a new thing that kind of came in. I'm not necessarily opposed to, um, you know, recommending that just so we can remain flexible here. Um, it, so I, I would say at least as far as today's discussion goes and allowing the TAC leads and the transit leads to work over the next couple weeks um, to identify projects at least um, I, I would say we would be open to having all those funding sources on the table, including STP um, in 27. Um, and, and also there is STP, I think that we're talking about that would be available with the VRE project. Um, no, I'm sorry, the VRE um, multimodal study, right? That would become potentially available. So I would say we'd be supportive of that, but I just think that we need to spend some time the next couple of weeks kind of flushing that out, making sure we understand um, all the projects. And then, you know, hopefully having some, some concept of how the types of projects we would be putting in for, but before we get to the policy committee on uh, whenever it is, June, July, whatever. Uh, Jason, this is Paul. I, I just want to quickly say with the, the FY27 funding, that's something we just learned kind of at the end of last week from VDOT, so we weren't aware of that before. Uh, so, so that is new. Uh, and I say that basically, uh, uh, 
I mean, we, 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 we could say with the funding that we're going to look potentially at kind of other funding beyond the $3 million um, in CMAQ that's available that's near term, but, but we're not kind of uh, uh, making a definite decision on that today. If you know, Maybe there's some concerns with, uh, with that, because I know that we are basically looking to revise the CMAQ as well as the STBG RSTP prioritization methodologies later this year. So we don't have to do that. I, what I'll say that I wanted to do is basically just leave the door open to potentially consider other CMAC or STBG RSTP funding beyond basically that roughly three million in near term funding that's available. Yeah, I think it's fine to leave the door open. I just like I said, I just think we need to kind of work that out over the next few weeks and and try to see what because I, I have not had a chance yet, at least on my end, to get the feel from our policy committee members on how they feel about looking at 27 funding yet. I mean, just given everything that's been you know, going back and forth over the last six months, I'm not sure how they would feel about that. But I, I'm, I'm open. I think we can open it up and have the discussion. And then ultimately, we just need to put it all in front of the policy committee in a couple of weeks, whenever that meeting is, and just say, hey, what do you think? And let them make the call on whether or not to, you know, how to open that up. We can just make the recommendation on applications, funds available, how much, et cetera. But I think, you know, staff would be supportive of the option here on the table that Eric put forward and um, uh, with his motion. This is Kate. Can I ask a clarifying question? Paul, you mentioned that the two PRTC slots would be for who again? So, so I'll say with FAMPO, PRTC represents all the transit agencies. And I'll say that the GW Ride Connect, the 125 would be outside of that. Okay. Uh, basically, that would be kind of uh, just a, a initial kind of allocation kind of off the top of the available CMAC that's available for FY22. Uh, but I said with PRTC, basically the two applications, the proposal is that uh, one would be uh, limited to the universe of kind of candidate projects for smart scale that have transit or TDM components that are eligible for CMAC. Uh, the, the other project could just be any transit project which is eligible for CMAC. Okay. So which agencies could submit projects through the two PRTC slots? So uh, basically, in the FAMPO region, there would be basically uh, uh, PRTC, there would be DRPT, there would be uh, FRED, there would be VERI, and I guess GW Ride Connect. Okay. Uh, and maybe HG AAA if they're eligible. I'm not sure if they are. And then, just from a process perspective, is it up to PRTC which two projects would get submitted? Well, they, they, they would be kind of the gatekeepers in terms of determining, yeah, right, which two projects get submitted. I mean, that would be something the transit agencies would need to work out. Okay, this is Chuck. Um, I, I think the way to go about it is to do, I'll reach out to each of the agencies. I'll take their suggestions. Uh, we'll, then we can arrange for a meeting where we can vet the, pro the two projects to put forward with the, the stipulation that one of the two has to be um, a round four project. And that's very limiting in itself. So, you know, we'll, the, essentially we'll have one project that we can put forward. If it's, if the amount of funding is relegated to um, the replacement funds, the funds that are being freed up by the 5307, again, you're talking about $3 million. Um, that means different things to different agencies. So we'll have to, we'll have to talk through. Hopefully we can reach a consensus on what the, what the, how to use those funds for the greatest impact. I, I think is the question that we have to get to. But I, I would seek to get a quick consensus on what which project or projects to put forward. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks, Jack. Good. 
This is Christine, and I don't mean to belabor this, and I'm fine with what the motion that is proposing, but I, I really feel like the number of applications for future call for projects when there's more time to discuss this process should be revisited. And I still believe that, you know, two applications from PRTC, given the, the number and diversity of potential transit related organizations that would be, um, you know, potentially having a need that could be applying for CMAC or RSTP, um, two is very limiting. So if, if there's an opportunity to have a more for you know a more formal policy and it, or an expanded policy or future call for projects, I, I really feel like that's necessary to to have somewhat of a level um, opportunity for everyone. This Thank is you, Jackson. I agree. Yeah, thanks, Christine and Jamie. I think that's uh, one thing we're going to be working on uh, here in item number 8C, where we're going to try to revamp our uh, our current process to try and take some of those into account here. Um, all right, I guess, uh, Adam, I'll kind of throw this back to you. Do we need to have a formal vote to make a recommendation to the uh, policy committee for a call for CMAC projects? I don't think we necessarily need to have a formal vote. Um, it wouldn't hurt, though, so I will leave that up to your discretion. Okay, well, since there's been uh, so much discussion about it, I guess it wouldn't hurt, like you said, to go ahead and have a vote. So I believe uh, the current motion as we had it was we would have eight potential uh, applications for the CMAC funding, two for each locality, and two for PRTC. And this would also include uh, 125000 of CMAC funds off the top to be provided to GWRI Connect and FY22. Is there any other further discussion? Yeah, Alex. Hey, Alex, uh, this is Adam. Whoops. Eric, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say procedurally, uh, I I made an initial motion and then uh, Paul made a motion. So to keep things clean, I'll withdraw my motion so that we can go with what we've been talking about. All right, thanks, Eric. And then I've got just one quick question as far as process and timing here. So I do know that the resolutions for Smart Scale are it's okay to submit those as late as I believe October 30th. Um, I did want to ask quickly, Stephen, um, as far as applying leveraged funding to these smart scale round four projects, is it okay to do that after the application window closes on August 3rd, or is that something that we would need to have in with the applications before the allocations are approved? Our guideline is that you go ahead and uh, at the time of your uh, submission of your application, you have your best scenario, your most likely, your best guess as to what it's gonna look like, but you do not have to have the, the resolutions of support uh, regarding any type of leveraging until October 30th. That's the deadline for that type of supporting documentation. That's to allow the uh, applicants a little more time based on the current situation. Got it, thank you. Can I ask one more clarifying question? Did we say, are the localities, are we limited to smart scale round four for our application? Uh, can you uh, clarify that? No, uh, Jason, I'm sorry. This is, uh, Jason, this is Paul. Yes, basically I, I had limited it to kind of a smart scale round four candidate projects, either kind of on locality list or on one of the regional lists for GWC or FAMPO. So, and, I'll, and I'll say some of the thinking with that is kind of the projects are already developed and ready to go. Uh, whereas if it was kind of open to just kind of brand new projects that would kind of maybe take longer to develop those projects and we don't have a lot of time. Right, I understand. Um, I guess what's going to happen if the smart scale projects aren't successful? We come back, the money becomes reavailable, then later, I guess, would be. Yes, yeah, so, so in the past, if uh, that has happened, you know, potentially uh, projects that are not successful and don't seem to have a, uh, 
a viable path forward could just kind of uh, come off the list and the money could be reallocated to another project which has a better chance based on the prioritization. All right, so this is Alex. I guess let me ask uh, one more question then regarding this. Would it be better to then not limit the applications to round four smart scale projects and maybe just limit it to existing projects or round four smart scale projects? So existing projects, I mean, that would just be a, kind of a project that's currently in the VDOT six-year plan that's not on the uh, it's not on the list kind of for smart scale? Right, I would say where it could include round four smart scale, but also previously approved uh, projects, even on our FAMPO list that don't currently have full funding. So, so, so I guess I'll say, I, I think that that would be okay if the projects are you know pretty much ready to go. All right, uh, Chuck, I'll throw it back to you then. Would, would that kind of alleviate some of your concerns about the PRTC and having a pre-existing smart scale project? Oh, yeah. I mean, it would be easier, uh, less restrictive, right? So I think it, yeah. opening up the universe doesn't necessarily make things easier, but I think it, it could result in some better discussion and better candidate projects to do that. To, to relax that limitation. I, I think it would be beneficial for the transit. So I guess, so I'm sorry guys, this is Jason. So we're talking about projects now that are, and I didn't mean to open up a can of worms here. I was just trying to understand on you know, which projects we were and weren't um, able to submit on. Um, we're talking about any projects that are in the VDOT six-year plan. For the localities? Um, I would right. say that, or I mean, I know we've got some on our list that, you know, smart scale projects haven't been technically approved and aren't in VDOT six-year plan yet. So I, I would assume those would count too. Is there um, is there a need for uh, just because I'm I'm all this on the FY27 came kind of late to the table and is there a need for us for the TAC to make a recommendation on that today? So, so Jason, this is Paul. I I don't think we have to make a definitive uh, decision on this today. I think we could. Uh, Say that it could be considered, but the, the policy committee on the 20th, they would make the ultimate decision on that. Right. Um, I guess um, I'm really not sure, at least from Stafford's point of view, I, I'm just not 100% sure everything that we're looking at in 27. I um, When we kind of had this initial discussion about the 5307, I thought, you know, we were geared more towards the near term. Um, I, I'm fine if we just go with what the motion was and just keep it there for now. And then um, I guess um, I was just asking a clarifying question on the smart scale. Thanks. All right, then I guess we're back to Paul's original motion for the uh, two applications per locality, two for PRTC based on uh, one of them would have to be an existing smart scale project, and then the same for localities. Both of those would have to be uh, smart scale projects. So not to belabor this, but the FY20 through FY22-23 funding, is that even going to be able to be used on round four? So, so this is Paul. Basically, what would need to happen basically is there, it would be a programming exercise, but that funding would need to be swapped out with other existing FAMPO, CMAC, or RSTP projects, 
and then funding that is later would be basically exchanged for that near-term funding. Uh, and I said the funding, it doesn't have to be out at like 26 or 27. It could be, let's say, 24, 25. Uh, but I said that that near-term funding, the previous through FY23, that should be put on near-term projects. And it could effectively, I guess, be used to accelerate some near-term projects. And then some of the out-year funding gets put on smart scale projects. So the answer is yes, if it's just a programming exercise. Mm -hmm. So the, sorry, I, I'm, all right. I think I understand what you're saying, Paul, basically shifting around money in the near term to open up um, and put, make sure that the funding could be moved essentially to the long term 26 27 20, whenever 25 26 27 um i guess <clears throat> i i i would just say why don't instead of just limiting it to round four smart scale why don't we just put it on the the fampo list has all of the projects plus the smart scale projects i guess that fampo and gwrc have submitted on right that's the world that i see us trying to use this funding in you know basically if it's on the the fampo six-year list if it's a if it's a if it's an approved um smart scale project for round four that's kind of the world i see this in right now but that's just my opinion i and i'm not sure if we're on the same page or if we're talking the same thing i just want to be really clear about that so, so, Jason, uh, you, I mean, what you would like to also include is basically just anything on the FAMPO, GJB, sorry, on the FAMPO CMAC RSTP kind of list, uh, which would be kind of any unfunded project or partially funded project that's on that list. That's. Yeah, that's what I was throwing out. I, I'm not not sure if that's the same thing you were talking about. I think you were just talking about round four smart scale. <clears throat> uh, let, let me just ask this question of Adam. Like right right now on the list for CMAC RSTP, are, aren't all the projects or almost all the projects are fully funded? I, I so I, I can't answer that off the top of my head, but I can pull up real quick for the group. This is the most recently approved allocation spreadsheet reflective of resolution 2040 from June 15th. Um, so I don't know if we necessarily need to go through line by line right now, but the uh, rightmost column has the balance to fully fund. So that should be a pretty quick indication as far as um, for the majority of these, what would be sort of left to fund. Okay. I guess like my, my understanding is with kind of the, the pending kind of the resolution 2103, I mean, once FAMPO approves that, that, uh, you know, pretty much all the existing projects would be fully funded. I know that kind of our kind of routes to a hood drive project is not fully funded with that, but we're working on kind of developing some other kind of local or private funding to fill in that gap. But um, I guess, I mean, was there a specific project that Stafford was concerned about? No, uh, Paul, I was just, I'm trying to wrap my mind around, um, you know, we're, we're right in the middle right now of moving a bunch of funding around with the policy committee, which I think we all kind of understand what's happening there in terms of how that's shifting and, and which projects. Um, I guess I was getting a little confused with having the near-term funding you know, the prior through FY23 
22, 23 CMAC funding that we're trying to make available with the 5307 swap, how that was going to be available for, you know, round four smart scale on FY26 um, timeframe. Um, I understand what you're saying about kind of moving funds around and reprogramming and so forth. I'm just, there's, there's just a lot of funds moving right now and I'm not, I understand what we're trying to get to um, in terms of giving everybody the best, um, the best ability for the region to be successful on smart scale round four with that concept. I'm just, um, the FY27 funds that are becoming available now, or at least the ability to allocate those, that's kind of thrown a bit of a, a curveball for me this morning in terms of what we're having discussion on. I, when I came into the meeting, I thought we were really focused on the 5307 near-term funding. And so I'm not opposed to opening up, you know, I guess Stafford's not opposed to opening up that discussion long-term. I just, I'm not 100% sure what we're um, limiting ourselves to with the applications. So, so your your proposal is basically just to open it up to anything on this list which is not fully funded. No, I was I was just honestly kind of asking if if that was the intention, but I think you're just narrowly saying round four smart scale, right? Yeah, I, I was thinking that those projects are developed and basically. Uh, I guess I say with existing list, I thought that everything was you know either fully funded or on its way to be fully funded. Uh, so I say, I mean, I say if there were deficits on certain projects, that's something we could look at. I just wasn't aware that there were deficits. No, I'm not saying that there are. I think, are we saying GWRC and FAMPO applications, smart scale applications, round four, or are we saying any round four smart scale application, whether it's a local uh, I, I, or... Yeah, but I was saying any round four smart scale application. So, so regardless of who's submitting it, it just would have to be within the FAMPO region. So it would be FAMPO, GWRC, the localities, or the transit organizations. Okay. Yeah, so, right. so it could not be something in King George or Caroline. Huh. Okay. Well... All right. All right. Well, I, I'm clear now. I'm sorry to have I, I've gone around the circle there with everybody. I'm just trying to make sure I'm understanding where we're at. Um, I think we're fine. All right. So um, I think then Paul's uh, motion still stands. Do I have a second for that? I'll second, Eric. Okay. Uh, any uh, further discussion? All right, hearing none, I guess we'll go ahead and take a vote. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. All right, looks like that motion passes, and we'll make the recommendation to the policy committee to make a call for CMAC projects. And what was this? What did vote? What did it vote? Uh, can you say that again? Okay, uh, I guess we'll move on to item 8B about the uh, Transportation Planning Board Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, Adam, you have an update for the committee? Sure, just briefly, Alex. Thank you. Um, so this is a copy that was presented um, at the June 22nd FAMPO Policy Committee meeting, and this is reflective of the most recent uh, proposed edits from Stafford County that are highlighted in yellow on page three. So this is as of June 19th. Um, so just a couple weeks ago and what we're asking for uh, between now and the June 20th policy or sorry July 20th policy committee meeting is any comments um, or any uh, you know feedback from uh, staff before this gets put forward uh, to the policy committee so the next step would be for the policy committee to essentially um, 
find consensus on this version of the draft document before it goes back to TPB for their team to review. So this is not the official sort of final version, um, if you will, but this, this would be sort of what FAMPO would collectively send back to the TPB um, for their consideration. So any, any discussion today or any comments between now and um, June 20th are, are welcome. Okay, thanks, Adam. I guess we'll just send those uh, comments to you. Yes. Okay. All right, thanks for that. Uh, moving on to item 8D, uh, sorry, 8C. Uh, this is the CMAC and STVG slash RSTP uh, methodology update. Uh, so just wanted to provide the group a brief update on this. Uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit this morning. Um, the TAC has started to take steps to update FAMPO's current CMAC uh, RSTP methodology. Uh, we're working with the localities and FAMPO staff to kind of create uh, separate prioritization methodologies. One for CMAC, which kind of focuses more on congestion uh, relief and improving air quality, and then a separate uh, methodology for STBG slash RSTP funding, which will try to seek uh, to take more advantage of the inherent flexibility of those fundings for transportation improvements. Uh, so far, we've kind of developed a, a draft methodology based on similar processes utilized by MPOs out in Hampton Roads, uh, Richmond, and Roanoke. Uh, but obviously, these documents still need quite a bit of work to put together. Um, TAC is working to try to have this methodology update completed before the end of the year and then circulate to uh, committee members for further comments and input. And uh, as Jamie and uh, Christine kind of mentioned before, we're certainly looking to institute processes to have further inclusion of uh, transit organizations as well to try to limit the number of applications we receive so we can really uh, put this funding to good use. Uh, that being said, I'll open it up. There's any further uh, questions regarding this? Alex, Michelle, are you guys planning to share your drafts with VDOT and DRPT as you develop those? Yes. Yeah, right now we have just a very rough draft put together, which we kind of borrowed heavily from Hampton Roads and Richmond and all. So I think we still need to do a little bit of polishing on that before we go ahead and give it out to the group as a cohesive document for review. Okay, thank you. All right, if uh, there's no other comments, we'll move on to the next item, number 8D. Uh, this is the allocation of CMAC and STPG RSTP funding. Uh, Adam, I guess I believe in the packet there, we've got the, kind of the scoring laid out. Okay, here we are. So these are the, uh, what we had, we had four projects uh, that were submitted for CMAC RSTP funding and uh, FAMPO staff scored. We had the, uh, what, the Route 1 208 Lafayette project. I think that is scored 93. Uh, we had the Route 1 Telegraph Road with a score of 80. Uh, let's see, I think going back up to the top, the Onville Road had a score of 77. And then last but not least was the uh, Outer Wild Boulevard uh, VCR trail connector with a score of 75. And there's the kind of the summary right there. And then I believe there's also a spreadsheet. Yeah, here. So this right, so Alex, just go ahead, Adam. Yeah, just real quick, uh, just wanted to point out for the group. So this is reflective of the resolution that was passed by the policy committee on June 15th. Um, so resolution 2040. Um, so just wanted to help everybody sort of uh, kind of trace through the different steps that have been involved here. So that's that's the purpose of including this document. Um, and then this next document is reflective of the proposed resolution 2103, which formerly was 20-46 on June 22nd, but of course, um, uh, was not voted on at that meeting. So um, this uh, spreadsheet here that's a attached to this draft resolution is reflective of the sort of latest iteration of the overall proposal for allocation of funds. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, and I believe this shows kind of where we've taken some previous years and out year funding from public involvement and uh, other areas of FAMPO and would place that on the Route 1 and Telegraph Road project. And then I guess we're going to here have to take a vote here on resolution 21 03, which would uh, allocate the unspent previous years and uh, out years RSTP funding, uh, totaling up to about $525,000 to the Route 1 and Telegraph Road Woodstock Lane intersection project. Do I have a motion? Uh, this is Paul. I'll make a motion to approve. Any second? This is Eric. I'll second. All right. Uh, any uh, further discussion? This is Kate. Can I just ask a question? Um, could you guys explain kind of how these transfers were developed? Sure. We can. Uh... I think there's a detailed sheet that kind of shows where the transfers were coming from. Sorry, maybe I can clarify. Is this something that locality staff prompted? Have we discussed this at prior TAC meetings? That's the kind of question that I'm asking. So, uh, Kata, this is Paul. So, so the FAMPO Policy Committee basically authorized that uh, uh, each locality basically submit one smart scale round for candidate project for consideration first for CMAC funding, and that was approved basically back at some point in the late winter. It might have been at the, the March meeting, is my guess. And then at a later meeting, basically, there was uh, approval similar to that for the STBG RSTP funding. And the three projects were basically the three that basically are, are on the list. Uh, I said later on in the process, there were some existing projects, one in Spotsylvania, two in Stafford, uh, which had deficits. So these were existing, or I say there, there was one existing Stafford project and there was one existing Spotsylvania project which had deficits. Th there was also basically a Stafford project for Route 1 Telegraph Road, which was uh, not not on the CMAC RSTP list, but which basically was added for consideration basically for uh, uh, CMAC RSTP funding. Um, and then basically based on that, it was the locality staff working with the the FAMPO staff. Uh, and I'll say that basically the CMAC allocations were developed first because that was earlier in the process. And then the STBG RSTP allocations were developed later. I'll say that the CMAC allocations were, I think, approved by FAMPO back in July, which are on June 15th. The, uh, the RSTP allocations have not been approved yet, and that's kind of what's on the spreadsheet 2103. Thanks, Paul. That's helpful. Sure. Okay. Any uh, further discussion before we call the vote? So we're adding this project. We're not going to wait until we finalize this round of call for call for projects to add this. I believe this one had already been approved by the policy committee in the past, and we're just calling for additional CMAC projects now for this freed up funding uh, from the VRE projects that were swapping out, I guess, for 5307 funds. Yeah, I think. This is Jason. I think there was a little bit of confusion um, because at, at one point um, the Telegraph Road project came in late in the process. Um, and so I think there was a little bit of confusion even at the policy committee level over whether or not that project had been, or whether or not funds had been allocated towards that project. And no funds have been allocated towards that project. This is just part of the process going through um, Stafford requested consideration for that project outside of the normal call 
previously requested consideration from the policy committee to submit that project for STP funding in the near term because of funding shortfalls. So that was approved by the policy committee in June to submit um, for that and score it. Um, and so that's for consideration only for STP. I don't, well, I don't think we put, we didn't put any, we didn't request any CMAC on it. I don't believe so. I I'm sorry. That the, the scoring just was available just in this agenda package, correct? That's the first time there's been any scoring information available. Um, Adam, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was available or it was presented at the last policy committee meeting or it was supposed to be, but that got cut short. I don't know. Right. The the uh, three projects that were initially considered for CMAX uh, funding, uh, the scoring has been presented at all three of our committees for those. Um, since the Telegraph project was, since we were directed to score that on the 15th, um, we have added that to this scoring. So it is scored against the other project in its category. But Adam, that was not available at the last policy committee agenda package, correct? For Telegraph, no. On the 15th, that was the first time they directed us to score that project. So this is the first time we're presenting scoring for the Telegraph project. Adam, I think it was available in the 22nd meeting for the policy committee, correct? The scoring? The, yes, it would have been in the packet. And um, we did notice an error that we made using one of the tools. So we have updated the scoring to be reflective of, of what we believe is the correct use of a tool um, for the scoring. So there's basically a spreadsheet. Um, I'm not sure if it's an EPA spreadsheet, but one of the metrics uh, for the category that Telegraph is in is to measure the change in level of service um, due to the project. And we had incorrectly used that tool the first time we presented the scoring in the 22nd packet. Gotcha. Thanks. We understand that, but we'll, we'll remind that there, there is a, a requirement that when you open the call for projects, it has to be open for all projects, not just one. So that, that's always been our, our concern with the process and making sure that this process has been followed properly. Yeah, and I think the, the nuance or the, at least the difference there, Michelle, and, and again, this is part of the confusion, was this, it wasn't a call for projects on, on the, there wasn't a second call for projects. There was a request for consideration for the Telegraph Road project because of the, the funding shortfalls. And that's something that um, BAMPO has done before. Um, and I, I know we could talk about that more, but I think that that's the difference here. It wasn't, it wasn't a call for projects. Stafford came and said, hey, we're having an issue on this project. Could we, re could we request RSTP funding on it to help out with the funding shortfall? All right, any uh, further discussion on this proposed resolution 21-03? I'm sorry, this is Christine. I just just to clarify cuz I'm I'm a little confused now with the the funding, the current CMAC funding on Broken Leland, which we've talked about previously of um, reallocating that to some other project. That has not yet been reallocated. That would be done in the fall in September in conjunction with this new call for projects, is that right? That's correct. Okay, just trying to make sure I got everything straight. Thank you. Okay. All right, well, if there's no further discussion, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, we've got a motion and a second. I'll go ahead and call the vote. All those in favor, uh, pass the resolution 2103 to recommend to the policy committee, say aye. 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 All right, any opposed, please say no. Michelle Vitz, no. Steven, no. Cool. Okay.
see. Moving on next, item item 8E, smart scale resolutions of support. Uh, Matthew, you want to go ahead and kick this one off? Yeah, so I am sharing my screen now. You all should be able to see it. Um, so we're currently working on the applications, and we need to decide which of the five applications or the 10 applications we're going to get down to four and four. Um, so for each, we have the five sample applications, and then we have the five GDRC applications, and a decision needs to be made um, on which four we're going to move forward this forward with this. So um, right now, we're trying to get a TAC recommendation on what the list is going to be for approval. So just kind of opening up discussion um, on that idea. Mr. Chair, this is Eric. A uh, quick question. Yeah. Of uh, the three and four are GWRC resolutions. Uh, that we, we don't typically get involved in making recommendations to the GWRC. So I don't know if these are, if it's appropriate for us to take action on these or just receive the information. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and I think our intention is just to put um, everything out there. If we don't need to take action on it, then um, that's okay, too. But these will be what is going to the GWRC board and the FAMPO board coming up. Right. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Has the TAC made a recommendation on past smart scale rounds for the GWRC projects? Uh, so, Kate, this is all. Um, so, so, so FAMPO has jurisdiction over kind of... Uh, any projects in the FAMPO region. So if on the GWRC list, let's say there are uh, three or four Stafford projects, those would have to be approved by FAMPO. So the answer to that is yes. But but if it's a project in King George or Caroline, the answer is no. Uh, that would just be under GWRC. Uh, j just looking at the resolutions, I mean, it looks like the two GWRC resolutions don't require FAMPO TAC or FAMPO approval. But I guess my question is, the uh, the regional projects that are under GWC that are in Stafford are those on one of the FAMPO resolutions? Um, yeah, so we have the four regional Stafford projects right here on FAMPO resolution 2106. Um, okay. So we have the four FAMPO area projects, and then on the GWC resolution, you'll see the fifth um, project in King George. Yeah, so, so what I would say is that the, the first two resolutions, 2106 and 2107, are ones that we should vote on and make a recommendation to the policy committee. Or say that the other two under GWC, those are just kind of FYI for the FAMPO TAC. Got it. Thank you. All right. Uh... Do I have a motion in uh, regarding oh. resolution 2106? So we need to, Alex, we need to decide which projects we are, um, which project we're dropping off from each of the list as well. So, so uh, Matthew, do you, so, this so is, Matthew, I think this gets back to Eric's question, which is, you know, if there's five projects and four are need to be approved by FAMPO, but the fifth is not a FAMPO region project, really, I think it should be up to the GWRC board what the four projects are. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe FAMPO staff could kind of walk us through timeline of why the TAC is voting on this now before the GWRC board has weighed in on what the four projects are going to be. So, Kate, I don't think there was any intent to basically not kind of, uh, you know, work with GWRC. I'll say basically with the, the original schedule, I think it was thought that basically these resolutions had to be approved before the end of July to meet the, the August 3rd kind of deadline. And the TAC, you know, meets before the GWRC board. So I think kind of that kind of is how this came about. But I'll say basically with um, the, the final decision on this, it's the GWRC board and the FAMPO policy committee. Right. Uh, when, when, when they meet later this month. Uh, I mean, what I'll say is on the, the FAMPO side, we, we are not ready today to decide on what our four projects are. Uh, so so we, we're not ready to go from five down to four. I'll say okay. on, the, on, the, on the GWRC side, I can't say, but, but we, may, we may not be ready to do that today either. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, we were, in essence, hoping to get a TAC recommendation because 
again, we do have a very short time frame to get the projects done um, and submitted for applications. Our intention was to get everything done um, the week before the deadline. Um, so we are looking for a tax recommendation. If we cannot come to a consensus, then um, that's fine. But we want to get this done, in essence, as soon as possible. This is uh, this is Nick here from King George. So um, I, I was under the assumption that we were going to, or that the TAC was going to make recommendations on the uh, on the on the projects to go to the GWRC board for voting. Um, and it sounds like what you guys are saying now is that uh, that that's not under the tax jurisdiction, and that this would come down to a GWRC vote. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I said that that FAMPO basically has to approve any of the, uh, the Stafford projects on the GWRC list, uh, but FAMPO doesn't have jurisdiction over King George or Caroline projects. Right, I understand. So the so the so I mean, honestly, what I'm here to, to sort of take a look at is the um, are the 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 crossover improvements here in King George off 301. I guess I'm just trying to understand if if that project is going to at least get submitted and that will go to a GWRC vote, that that decision won't be made uh, today or right now on a vote. Just trying to clarify that. Yeah, so this is Kate. Um, the GWRC Executive Committee is meeting on July 20th for 30 minutes before the FAMPO Policy Committee meeting. And the purpose right. of that meeting is to pass the resolution in support of their four smart scale projects. So five were submitted for pre-application, but we have to whittle it down to the four for final um, for the final application. So Correct. I'm wondering if this body could simply, you know, support all of these projects and then let it go to the GWRC board for the final um, determination of which ones move forward. I mean, because the FAMPO policy committee is going to, in essence, bless any Stafford projects that the GWRC board pushes forward. I think that makes good sense. I would add to, this is Adam, I, I would add to, it, it would be beneficial for our staff as we work on these applications if we did have some type of recommendation from uh, the tax. Um, there, you know, as Matthew said, there's quite a bit of work that, that goes into preparing the applications. Um, so for us to, to work on one that will not eventually be submitted for either list, be it GWRC or FAMPO, is um, not necessarily time wasted, but uh, it, it, it doesn't necessarily help our cause with a, with a short staff. So, um, you know, like Paul said, there, there's not a requirement today for the TAC to make a formal you know, recommendation to either board. Um, but but we would want to see if if there is a jurisdiction that has a project on the table um, that that would consider you know dropping their project at, at this point. Um, it can of course go to a, a vote at both the GWRC board and the policy committee. Um, but but that's kind of where we're at now is is we're we're not looking to duplicate any any efforts here with with our our work. All right, well, I guess I'll, on that note, I'll kind of open it up for discussion. If any uh, locality organization uh, has a project on these lists they want to consider uh, dropping from consideration. If I, if I may, um, this is Nick from King George. Um, my, uh, my county administrator, Mr. Neiman Young, Dr. Neiman Young, would like to um, share a comment or make a statement if that's possible. Yes, certainly. Sure. Uh, yeah. Paul, I saw you said that um, the TAC usually does not su support a recommendation uh, on GWRC uh, submissions for projects. Is that correct? Yes. So I said basically what the TAC has jurisdiction over basically or any projects, and I'll say FAMPO has jurisdiction over any projects in the FAMPO area. So basically, uh, FAMPO basically has no basically uh, control over projects in King George or Caroline. So I say basically the TAC decision on this resolution today is not really a big, you know, it, issue. And I'll say it's the GWC board. Uh, when the executive committee meets later this month, I forget the date for that. But even when that occurs, that's going to be the decision point on kind of what the four projects are. And I, and I understand that. And I would uh, agree, save the fact 
that on your FAMPO resolution, not only do you make the recommendations for the FAMPO smart scale projects, but then under the further resolve, the, um, this resolution requests that GWRC support uh, the uh, following smart scale projects uh, for Stafford. So it's kind of like you're saying, well, we're, we're going to be silent on the GWRC uh, resolution, which is so happens uh, to contain those same projects and King George's project, but you're asking for the TAC to uh, weigh in on the FAMPO resolution, which supports the Stafford uh, smart scale projects at, with GWRC. So I'm kind of confused on that. So, so, so let me just ask this question to Stafford. Like, is Stafford ready to make a decision today on the GWRC kind of projects? Like, in terms of a Stafford project potentially being dropped? Uh, this is Jason. Um, I've talked about this um, with our board, and the answer is no. Um, but I, I guess to um, Mr. Young's um, question, and I, I'm looking at these resolutions as well, I, I think what's happening today, or at least what the TAC is just considering, is whether or not to um, make a recommendation specifically on the FAMPO projects. Um, I agree with what Paul said earlier. I don't think the TAC is ready today um, to make a recommendation one way or the other. Um, I think that this is really something um, that needs to be worked out through the policy committee. Um, the GWRC Policy Committee and the FAMPO Policy Committee. Um, I mean, at, at best, you know, what the TAC could do today is kind of, um, in my opinion, again, reiterate the, uh, the the previous projects and say, hey, we're still recommending these projects for approval. The, the issue being that, at least on the GWRC side, the TAC doesn't have any um, jurisdiction over or at least any um, consideration for the King George project um, so I understand how that may appear but I don't think I, I don't think there's any intent there yes sir mr. Tari I respect and I appreciate the explanation but um, it still remains that with that last last paragraph in this FAMPO resolution that you all asking for the tech to adopt and endorse it basically references those four GWRC projects and remains silent on the King George um, project. And then um, it is asked that the TAC remain silent on the GWRC resolution that does contain the King George uh, project. So it seems, or it at least implies, that um, the TAC is providing a recommendation on the Stafford projects and by default is not um, uh, moving forward with any consideration for the King George project. And that's, that's pretty concerning. Um, what I would recommend that if, if you all is going to move forward with this, um, um, resolution that at least be amended to include the um, King George project or be amended to take that last paragraph out and just let the GWRC executive policy uh, committee make decisions on GWRC projects. Yeah, understood. And I think what my recommendation would be would be just to not take action today on these. And Adam and Matthew, I know that keeps you guys a little bit more in limbo at the moment, but I, I think that um that there's that this is this decision's above our pay grade <laughs> let's say it that way i leave, would leave it to the policy just, yeah thanks jason and and i would add just a, a couple things to dr young's point um as far as what this eventual fanfo resolution 21-06 will look like for the policy committee the intention is that that last paragraph to be a further resolved section is simply reflective of what the gwrc board lands on so if that project list for the GWRC board is three Stafford projects and one King George project, even if that was the case, um, this that paragraph would only list the three Stafford projects because those are the only ones in the FAMPO study area. So the, the fact that we have brackets around each of the projects is, is meant to indicate that it's just a placeholder right now. So this is not an official en endorsement or an official approval of any resolution. This is just to sort of move it move it on, get a staff level recommendation, but it sounds like um, the rest of the committee is not ready to uh, take action on um, an official endorsement of this at this point. So um, to your point, understood as far as um, the fact that the King George project is not listed here, but all that last paragraph is meant to be is simply reflective of where the GWRC board lands on those four projects. 
I understand that, Adam, and I appreciate it. All right, well, hearing from committee members, we're not really ready to take vote on uh, item 8E today. I think we'll just go ahead and table that and move on to the next item in the agenda, which is item number 8F, which is the GWRC draft resolution 2103, endorsing uh, George Washington Region Economic Development Opportunities for Transportation. Uh, Adam? Thanks, Alex. So I will take this one, and we might be in a similar situation as far as the vote or perhaps a recommendation to the GWRC board. So it, it doesn't sound like that that's an official step that would need to take place, but effectively what this document is, um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the 2018 version for Smart Scale Round 3. Uh, this is basically a document that's meant to show a strong connection between economic development initiatives in the region and tie those to transportation projects. So I'll just sort of briefly scroll through this document for those who have not seen it. Um, the first half of it basically says, here's uh, kind of what the region looks like from, a, um, from an economic development perspective. Here's some of the major projects that are going on. Here's what the um, local documents say as far as, you know, the city of Fredericksburg, Stafford, King George, all of our jurisdictions as far as um, what they respectively do for economic development. And then what we do at the end is basically take all of that information and say that there's a very strong connection between that and then the projects that are being put forward, um, not just for smart scale, but um, but as a whole, you know, within the region. So it's 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 meant to show that strong connection. So that's just sort of a quick background as far as the purpose of this document. And so what we've been required to do for smart scale round four is effectively update this information to be reflective of the current scenario in the region for um, for 2020. So what we've done is we've worked with Go Virginia staff as well as staff at FRA over the last few weeks to get this document updated. Um, so did want to say a thank you to those of you who have uh, worked with Jordan Chandler over the last few weeks to get your respective jurisdictions um, or agencies project list updated. So let me scroll quickly to the very end to show you what I'm talking about there. So essentially each, each locality, each agency that has um, projects in the region, we just want this list to be reflective of what, again, the current sort of universe of projects is. Um, so that when this is considered with our smart scale applications, um, again, we can show that strong connection between economic development uh, and, and transportation, of course. Um, so what we wanted to do today is just bring this to the committees, um, you know, just bring this to the table for everybody's awareness, but then also um, there's one specific section of the document that we are asking for a little bit of feedback on. Um, this is a screenshot from the 2018 document, and basically this is, a list of regionally significant projects that um, are tied to economic development, and it sort of has a matrix built out as far as the impact it has on um, different elements of um, sort of what goes into this growing region, if you will. And so what we wanted to ask is that for these two slides, if anyone has any projects that they would like for us to add to this list, or any that are within their agency or their jurisdiction that can come off if they're complete. Um, you know, that's just something that we would want to know so that we can finalize this document. So we are we are hoping to get this finalized uh, and put this before the GWRC board at their July 20th executive committee meeting. Um, so we will send this out to the TAC after this meeting and simply ask if there's any projects that need to be added to this list um, that, that, you know, just please let us know. Um, as, as far as that goes. And so, um, again, going back to the agenda here, I, I don't believe we actually need, um, from a process point of view, a recommendation for approval of this document to the GWRC board. It's just something that, that we will, as a staff, put forward uh, for their executive committee on, on July 20th. Okay, thanks, Adam. Uh, does the group have any discussion on this? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item, item 8G, the public comment period report summary. Uh, Stacy, could you kick us off for us? Yeah, sure. Um, all of you should have received uh, a copy of the executive, I'm sorry, um, it has an executive report in it. She, um, outreach efforts and outcomes for the four different public comment periods um, that were open from May 20th to June 19th. 
Um, the policy committee has yet to approve the 2045 long range transportation plan amendment. Um, so I'm gonna to skip to the section of the executive report um, and just quickly um, give you an update on what those comments were since there is still time to consider them. Um, so we received 21 comments on the 2045 LRTP amendment um, with over half of them expressing support for a citizen's proposal for a parallel route to I-95. Um, but overall, um, comments expressed a desire for improved public transit, alternative modes of transportation, um, and also a request for funding clarity within the document. VDOT also um, submitted comments and we included it in this report. Um, and those comments provide updates to estimates and project descriptions. Um, again, I'm just gonna go over the 2045 LRTP amendment comments. However, if you have questions on comments that were received for the fiscal year UPWP amendment for the UPWP, we did have comments for those. And if there's interest, I'd be happy to uh, review generally what those were. Hey, uh, Stacy. this is Paul. I, I just wanted to uh, commend you for, for doing an outstanding job on the public comments, uh, ju just for all the different documents with the EPWP and the LRTP, as well as the tip a few months ago. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. This is Kate. I'll echo that. Excellent work. Probably the most public involvement we've seen on any of these documents in recent history so well done thank you Kate. So, so this is paul I, I actually had a comment on the last agenda item 8f i missed this but also that draft resolution 2103 that that should go to basically fampo for the fampo region projects and it goes to gwc for king george and caroline and, and the way kind of it's written it looks like it's just going to gwc Okay, yeah, Paul, we did a little bit of research um, as far as what was done in round three. So, so you're saying that the that the approval of the document should go to FAMPO as well? Yeah, it, sh it should go to both. Okay, yep, we can do that. We'll make sure that that's on both agendas. Sure. All right, well, Stacey, thanks for the update on the public comment outreach. Uh, I guess we'll move on to item 8H, which is the 2050 uh, LRTP update. All right, Adam? Thank you, Alex. So do you have a quick update as far as the sort of picking up of the 2050 LRTP effort that we started? So going back a couple months ago, the original plan um, as of maybe February or March was to pick this back up once we get a new FAMPO administrator hired. Uh, we're still not quite there, unfortunately, so we do need to get this project moving again. Um, so what we've done, we've started to develop a work plan that will outline all of the tasks and sort of a schedule between now and late 2021. So this effort started in FAMPO back in FY19, so there are thankfully a handful of tasks that are already complete. So what we have done here in the past couple of weeks is we've worked a little bit with Paul and made a list of tasks that need to be complete and sort of split those up between what we have the capability and the bandwidth to do in-house versus what we need to um, ask for assistance from a consultant with. So what we've done is um, sent a list of tasks over to Cambridge as of last week and asked them to develop a statement of work for a task order. Um, so we should be getting that back from them with a cost estimate, um, hopefully sometime this week. And those tasks are primarily centered around travel demand modeling, um, conformance with federal uh, requirements for the document, and then assistance with demonstrating the fiscal constraint for the project list. Um, so those are the sort of three primary elements that we're asking for their assistance with. Um, so again, we should have that later this week, and as soon as we have that, we will, of course, include that task order in the correspondence for the policy committee meeting and distribute that to the TAC. Um, so that is just a quick update on kind of where we are with the uh, the 2050 LRTP, and I'm happy to take any questions on that. 
Yeah, Adam, uh, this is Paul. So in terms of like the notice to proceed for that, would that like start in August, the work? Um, we, we don't have an official start date. We would want to make sure that that's in by July 31st, though, based on the terms of the contract. Okay, sounds good. All right, well, hearing no further questions from Adam, we'll move on to item 8I which is the uh, GWRC 2050 LRTP update. Uh, Carrie? Good morning, everybody. Adam, you can go ahead and just give it a quick scroll through while I'm talking, thanks. Um, so presented in your packet is the draft 2050 GWRC rural LRTP covering the counties of Caroline and King George. If y'all would please take a look at it and pass along your comments to us by the end of this month. Uh, we'll be presenting it at the final draft sorry, presenting the final draft at the August GWRC meeting. So that's pretty much it. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks. All right, thanks, Carrie. So yeah, just a reminder, if everybody can have review that and have your comments to Carrie before the end of the month, that'd be appreciated. All right, uh, next move on to 8J. A discussion on the TAC bylaws and voting and membership. Paul? Uh, good morning to everyone again. I, I didn't want to have a big discussion on this today, but but I wanted just to talk a little bit about this. I said that um, uh, a bunch of us kind of from the localities, we've been looking at the TAC bylaws for voting and membership. I'll say, I guess if you can scroll down a little bit, uh, uh, I think it's, I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. I think it's on the second page, kind of the, the top, yeah. Uh, if you look, I guess, at Article 4, yeah, you can just stop there. But I'll say that there, there, there is some kind of lack of clarity kind of on the, the current kind of voting and membership for the TAC. And uh, I'll say kind of there, there is some lack of clarity, too, kind of with some of the items kind of going to uh, FAMPO versus being GWC items. And... Uh, uh, we would like to work cooperatively to kind of improve that clarity in the next couple of months. We, we would also like to work to make the, the TAC voting more consistent with the, the FAMPO Policy Committee. FAMPO Policy Committee has three votes per FAMPO locality, and then basically uh, there's one vote for transit, which is uh, under PRTC currently, and there's one uh, vote under the state for the Secretary of Transportation, which is under VDOT currently, and we would like to be more consistent with that. Uh, so, so we want just the group to be aware of this and uh, uh, we're, we're, we're looking to work on this in the next couple of months. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to take any questions and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll also kind of throw it open to Stafford and the city to kind of add to what I've said. Uh, this is Eric. Uh, not to belabor this, but but there is some lack of clarity that we've we've recognized, and so it, it is something that I think needs to be addressed. Yeah, I think I'll echo those comments. Uh, not only have we identified our uh, prioritization methodology as needing some updates, but it looks like our bylaws uh, could use a little updating and polishing as well. So I'm all on board to kind of work with the. Uh, the other TAC members to try to clean this up a little bit and make it easier to understand. Any other further discussion? I'm good. All right, then I guess we'll move on to the next uh, item number nine, uh, correspondence. Don't have any correspondence. Say that again, Adam. Sorry, we don't have any correspondence today, Alex. Okay. Uh, moving on into uh, staff reports. Any staff reports? Not today. All right. Next, member reports. I guess uh, Paul will go ahead and uh, kick it off with you. Anything for uh, Spotsylvania? So I'll say we're working on a smart scale, and I guess one, one, one thing I guess I'll just throw out to the group with, uh, you know, just the, the TAC recommendation from policy, if we needed to 
have a short meeting maybe uh, next week, at the beginning of next week. Uh, for smart skill recommendations for FAMPO, that's something that we would be open to participating in. Uh, the, the other thing I guess I wanted to ask is just the, the date of the uh, September TAC meeting. I'll say that I'll, I'll be away basically on vacation on August 31st. I was wondering if it would be possible maybe to uh, reschedule that for September 14th. I'll say for some reason on, on our calendar we had September 14th was the date. So I guess we were surprised to see that it was August 31st. Yeah, Paul, I can chime in on that real quick. We did uh, push that up to the 31st in line of Labor Day. Um, makes it a lot easier on us to be candid when there's a little bit more time between the TAC and the policy committee meeting. So we, we propose to push it up rather than leave it back. Um, if the group wants to move it back to the 14th of September, we can do that. But our recommendation would be to keep it at the 31st. But Alex, we'll leave that up to you. I'll, I'll say another option is could we do September 8th? It's a Tuesday. I think that can work for us. Yes, yeah, September 8th would work for me. This this is the city. Uh, the 8th or the 14th is, is fine with us, uh, whatever works for the group. No problems here either. Thank you. Okay, well then I think maybe we'll go back and handle that. Uh, we'll maybe look at switching the meeting date on number 12 when we get there. Um, I guess, Paul, does that wrap that up for you as far as a uh, report? Yeah, I, 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 I did not have any other comments. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, any other member comments? Yeah, so actually. No, no, no. Go, go ahead. Um, for DRPT, the CTB approved additions to their to the FY20 SIP at their June meeting. And um, so the workshop presentation to the CTB and the workshop video, as well as the CTB resolution can be found on the CTB website. And um, the next steps are DRPT will reevaluate the alloc allocations based on revenue projections and agency needs in September. And that's all we have. Okay, thanks, Sierra. Yeah, this is Nick. Um, I just wanted to thank GWRC staff for the, the good work they did on the uh, LRTP um, for King George and Carolina County. It was, it was really well written and a uh, very good report. So I appreciate that. All right, I guess I'll just close it out for Stafford by stating uh, similar to Spotsylvania, we're trying to work to uh, wrap up our final smart scale applications and get those submitted uh, by August 3rd. I guess moving on last, our last item number 12 for our next meeting uh, got proposed for September 8th. Uh, that works with me. Does anyone have any objections to moving our meeting to September 8th? No objection from Eric. I uh, no objection from Spotsylvania. No objection here in King George. All right. Well, hearing no objections, then I let's go ahead and set then our next meeting for Tuesday, September eighth at nine thirty in the morning. And this is Seattle Williams with DRPT. Can I just add one more thing? Sure. My apologies. I forgot to introduce um, Kate Youngbluth. She is the manager of Northern Virginia Rail Projects for DRPT. So um, she may be attending some of these meetings. So I think she hopped back on. Um, but I just wanted to take the, the, the time to introduce her. Thank you, Sierra. This is Kate Youngbluth. I'm glad to have joined you all. I just recently joined DRPT uh, at the end of last year and um, am getting uh, involved with uh, all kinds of things throughout the Northern Virginia region. I'm glad to be uh, um, participating with you all and get to know you guys uh, as we come uh, forward. And I'll be um, definitely attending the next 
September 8th meeting. No objection from me on that. Not that I'm a voting member. It's, it's typically going to be Sierra and Todd that you'll see at, at the meetings as you had in the, in, the, um, in the past, and I'll just be participating in the future. So glad to join you. Thanks so much, Sierra and everybody. All right, cool. Thanks, Kate. Glad to have you on board the team. All right, well, I guess uh, with no further objections to our moving our meeting date to the 8th, I guess that pretty much concludes and adjourns our meeting for today. Thank you all. Yep, thank See you. you on the